And thank you again for uh, kindly inviting me, uh, and particularly uh, the Macedonian Centre of European Training and the Open Society Foundation and all the others uh, who are involved in trying to uh, maintain the um, pressure uh, on the uh, government uh, for uh, a change, for a new approach and also uh, raising awareness internationally and it's greatly appreciated what all of you are doing despite very difficult circumstances uh, and we really admire the courage uh, uh, that you have shown uh, throughout uh, this uh, never-ending agony, I may call it that way, uh, for uh, Macedonia. Uh, and as I say, we, I wish we could do more uh, internationally, and we should be doing more. And those are, I think, two preliminary issues. First of all, the urgency of action uh, has been repeated many times before, but it has to be repeated again even more today because of the unfolding developments. Every day we think we have reached uh, the bottom, but uh, we find only the next day uh, another development which shows that uh, the bottom uh, for uh, the ruling party is not that one, it's uh, again even further. Uh, and uh, the other uh, important element I think is important to emphasize is the fact that from the recent history of Macedonia it is clear that the political elite does not have the capacity, unfortunately, does not have the capacity to resolve these crises on their own. Uh, whether it was in the 2001 conflict uh, or uh, in uh, succeeding years, uh, in 2012, 13 and so on, the international community has had to be involved uh, in order to find a, a solution. And uh, so this, of course, is not to the liking of the ruling party. Uh, and um, they feel and they continue to insist, of course, and they object to the involvement of the international community. I was quite shocked uh, when I read the statement of President Ivanov a few weeks ago when he mentioned uh, uh, that uh, he felt that certain diplomatic representatives were acting in a manner uh, which went beyond the what he termed the normal standards. Uh, and so this shows that clearly uh, the uh, ruling party and those apologists who are supporting the ruling party uh, do not wish to entertain the idea of international presence, international mediation. But this is the only way uh, to ensure that a solution will be found to this crisis. So, uh, and this is of course uh, the problem that um, over the recent past, uh, the European Union, which should be the primary actor uh, in finding a solution to the unfolding crisis, together with the United States, um, has not been as consistent as it should be. If you look at the progress reports 2012, for example, the reference to political dialogue was hardly mentioned, whereas in the previous years, and certainly while I was here, this was always a, a major uh, criteria, political dialogue to ensure that there was uh, a uh, effort at consensus building and also uh, an effort at ensuring greater accountability and where the civil society role uh, came into to play. Unfortunately, uh, not just due to the fact that political dialogue was barely mentioned in 2012, but certainly I'm sure it contributed to that fact, we had the crisis on the 24th of December 2012. And the reaction from the European Union was extremely disappointing, feeble, very weak, and I have no doubt that this gave a greater impunity, a sense of impunity to the ruling party to continue with its own uh, agenda. 
uh, which, as we know, uh, an, is an agenda which is totally contrary to the long-term interests of Macedonia as a functioning democracy uh, part of the European Union. So um, this lack of consistency, unfortunately, has reduced the, the leverage uh, of the European Union. And in addition to that, we have the fact that in the EU itself, uh, enlargement is no longer the popular uh, policy issue that it was. Uh, it is criticized a lot by right-wing uh, populist parties, whether it is in France, in the, even in the UK and others. So this also weakens the, the European Union's capacity to act. But nevertheless, it does not excuse the fact that uh, the European Union cannot simply um, leave this matter to the regular run-of-the-mill discussions and uh, intermittent uh, mediation uh, negotiations uh, without really uh, addressing the root causes of the conflict here uh, in Macedonia. Uh, and um, there has been a tendency, unfortunately, which is still prevalent in the EU context, uh, to uh, look at the Balkans as uh, a, an area where, as long as there is stability, uh, all the other issues like rule of law, etc., will sort themselves out. This clearly is a false premise. It's a wrong approach and it has been shown to be totally wrong. Uh, and I think they are gradually beginning to realize that uh, in the EU institutions, but in, their, in the meantime, uh, there is uh, the worsening situation in the case of Macedonia. And this has, of course, an impact for the region, because if uh, the uh, leaders who are already uh, were under investigation by the special prosecutor following the wiretapping revelations, uh, if those leaders get away without uh, being processed uh, in the courts, uh, if they get away with just a slap on the wrist, this sends a, a terrible message to the leaders uh, in the region. Uh, and uh, that the EU's tolerance level uh, is such that uh, uh, political leaders can uh, take actions which are totally contrary to the interests of uh, the basic democratic standards, which are the conditions, the conditionality uh, for accession to the European Union. So in this very gloomy situation, unfortunately, um, I would again reiterate, first of all, that the European Union needs to take a very urgent uh, action uh, and uh, the uh, meeting which was envisaged to take place in Vienna a few weeks ago, which was, of course, a, a big mistake uh, to uh, suggest Vienna and I fully agree with those who, who said that uh, the, all the negotiations, meetings should take place uh, in uh, Macedonia itself, if only also to guarantee greater transparency. The solution to this crisis should not come from uh, a deal uh, in a back room with uh, four or five political leaders. It must be uh, one uh, which has full transparency and where civil society has been able to give its view. And uh, I heard uh, from my friends here yesterday that Commissioner Han has not met with the civil society since last September. And this is a big mistake. And many of us have uh, repeatedly uh, uh, encouraged his office to make sure that each time uh, he visits uh, for these negotiation sessions, there should be a space reserved specifically for civil society. And this would give a message to the political leadership that civil society has a critical role to play. Civil society makes sure that the government and the political leaders must be held accountable for their uh, actions. This is the, the role uh, of civil society. And there are, of course, laws in place here uh, which, uh, whereby 
civil society must be uh, consulted for all policy uh, decisions. But of course, as we know, uh, it is uh, not uh, implemented at all. So uh, the first, uh, certainly the first condition that the EU must continue to insist on uh, is the withdrawal of the presidential pardons. This must be a sine qua non for any continuation towards a political solution. Uh, and the quicker that is done, uh, I am sure that there are enough legal experts in Macedonia to determine how this can be done. If the president doesn't want to do it, surely parliament uh, can uh, be able to uh, do that or take that uh, decision. Secondly, uh, there uh, must be a very clear signal now uh, that elections on the 5th of June would certainly uh, worsen the crisis rather than solve it. And as, if we recall, what was the objective of these early elections, which was discussed in the Persian agreement last year? It was to signal a change and a, a new approach in Macedonia, a return to the democratic standards, a signal to the citizens that they can have confidence in a new uh, electoral um, a process which would guarantee that their vote means something and that it will be free from the intimidation and irregularities that have characterized so many of the past elections. But clearly, as has been stated, uh, those conditions are not met. And uh, I do believe that uh, the uh, European Union and the United States should uh, issue a second letter to the one they issued on the 21st of February which they addressed to the Prime Minister, where, wherein they stated that uh, the uh, reforms are still uh, not uh, in place and therefore there needs to be uh, a postponement. There, this should be now repeated by the United States and the European Union uh, formally, uh, and I don't understand why it has not been done yet, uh, because we are approaching the uh, timeline where um, the clock starts ticking and it cannot be stopped after the 11th of May. So there should be a, a very clear signal that uh, it will not be possible to have the elections on the 5th of June. And I would certainly believe that the letter should state, or the message from the EU and US should state, that uh, no election date should be set until such time as all the conditions are in place. And of course, this was one of the mistakes of the Persian agreement, and many of us pointed it out at the time, also at the international level, uh, the uh, independent experts, that uh, the date that they had set originally was far too early to ensure that everything is in place. Because it's not just about laws and regulations, it's also about changing behavior, changing mindset uh, of the ruling party, which very clearly uh, did not want to do anything uh, uh, to help in fully implementing the Persian agreement. <clears throat> the next element, of course, that the EU and US should insist upon is uh, guaranteeing that the special prosecutor can operate uh, without further uh, impediment, without obstacles that are constantly being thrown at her and her office by the various state organs, uh, ministries, uh, and also uh, the attacks she is constantly being, that are constantly being leveled at her by ruling party officials. Uh, last week, I think it was the turn of former Foreign Minister Milosovsky who made such a, uh, a dreadful statement, uh, clearly demonstrating that they are not interested in rule of law. Uh, and uh, suggesting that she is uh, an instrument of the opposition. Uh, and so this also uh, must be made clear. And again, these are instances when the European Union should really hit back very, very clearly and uh, very uh, strongly. I, I recall that on the 23rd of January, I think it was, when the, the then, uh, was he still Prime Minister or he had just left? Mr. Goreski made a statement to the women's, uh, Vimro women's uh, organization, 
where he used uh, in this, uh, some quite uh, extraordinary uh, and appalling language and he used in the same sentence uh, thieves, um, the special, prosecu special uh, prosecutor, um, and Mr. von Houten. Uh, and uh, the reaction from the European Union was silence. This is uh, a big mistake because then it gives the impression to the Prime Minister or to whoever is leader of the party and his people that they can carry on, that the international community doesn't pay attention. So these are really uh, issues where the EU has to be much, much more assertive, much stronger. And finally, the PRIBA report. What was the point of this so-called PRIBA report? Setting out very clearly all the uh, areas where there has been a clear violation uh, of rights, where there has been an abuse of power, where there have been cases of corruption, etc., etc. This report, which is only a few pages, this should be waived at the political leadership and the ruling party every day by the European Union, by the United States. Otherwise, what's the point of having a report which was prepared by very qualified uh, and highly respected legal experts from several part countries of the European Union, including one from Ireland. Uh, and, um, and it is there, but it has not been implemented. So uh, again, this is a failing of the European Union in not ensuring effective follow-up uh, of all those, uh, whether it is uh, recommendations in the regular progress reports or those uh, recommendations such as those contained in the PRIBA report and the urgent uh, reform priorities. And that requires a on-the-spot constant um, supervision uh, to ensure that each of the uh, issues, each of the recommendations uh, are addressed and implemented. And I agree uh, with one of the speakers who suggested that for each of those uh, issues identified, there should be deadlines set out, and if the deadline is not respected, then the European Union should threaten with sanctions. Uh, and there has been discussions in Brussels about sanctions, possible sanctions. Lists have been drawn up of different targeted sanctions because obviously uh, it's important not to uh, undermine uh, or affect the citizens of Macedonia, but that it hasn't gone further than that. And I think to be credible, the European Union needs to um, uh, make very clear that if the ruling party does not fulfill its commitments, that they will be subject to severe uh, sanctions uh, in order to um, to fulfil the the commitments. So, if uh, the elections are not to take place in June, uh, they should uh, not there should not be a date, as I say, uh, set until uh, all the conditions are met, and then there can be a discussion about a date. And I think this would be the task of the technical government. But there has to be this constant supervision uh, uh, by, and monitoring by the European Union and by the United States and the other international community. Otherwise, the delivery will not happen. And I think the, 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 the frustration of the citizens will only grow uh, even further. Uh, and I, as I say at the beginning, I admire uh, all of those who every evening going out there, uh, not attracted by uh, sandwiches, free sandwiches uh, or uh, juice, free juice, but there because they want to show their frustration and that they've had enough of their rights being trampled on. And we are support, very supportive of you all, all that. And we, uh, my colleagues, I'm sure, and I will continue to do all we can uh, in our very, my very modest level to help in that process. Thank you.